Welcome to the latest edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and with me tonight is a very, very special guest and somebody who I have to say, I have to admit, has been a very close friend of mine for 45 years. And we went to high school together and grew up, practically grew up together from that point on. And uh, class in St. Peter's Prep class in 1979 with me is my very, very good friend and the head, head men's basketball coach at Fairleigh Dickinson University in Teaneck, my friend Greg Herenda. Greg, how you doing today? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, that's good. See, you're the first person to call me like everybody knows me as Hey. See, you know, everybody else is with the Jim and Jimmy. I don't yeah, even know who no. Jimmy is. I don't know who Jimmy is. Who's that? The other thing, hey, when I say where I go to high school, everywhere in the world, I tell them St. Peter's Prep. I don't say I went to high school. It's very, as you well know, going to high school is one thing and going to prep is another thing. That's so I'm good. a proud... We're proud graduates of St. Peter's Prep, and that's uh, that's a great thing. There's no question. There's no question. That's a great thing. All right, so we're gonna turn we're gonna turn the clock back before uh, you got to prep, and let's start yep. with uh, when you were born. And you were born in Hoboken, correct? Incorrect, Hag. Wow, Incorrect. I'm wrong. Were you born in Jersey City? You always get in trouble. I was born in Christ Hospital in Jersey City. Wow. How did my, your mother but, and father take you there instead of going to St. Mary's? Well, you know what? I, I don't even know if St. Mary's was in existence back in those days. But a lot of my family... You weren't born uh, in 1893. You weren't born well, with a midwife. No, well, St. Mary's wasn't... Everyone in my family, my... Other than Bill, my older brother, Anthony, and my late sister, Lynn, were born in Christ Hospital. And I file suit but my parents lived in hoboken so it's crazy every time there's an article i'm a na- where i'm a native of i was born in oh i Jersey never let city. you go- i never let you live that down I yeah said, you're, always, native of Jersey you're always city. Wrong. I went nuts <laughs> <laughs> well i think it's where you're born but i was born in jersey city let's let's clear the record right now all right go ahead because that's what your show is all about man it's about the truth that's good. i was i was born in jersey city my, when I went home, I was taken to Hoboken, and, and then four months later, my father saved up enough money. He was a graduate of Stevens Institute of Technology, and they, my family bought a home in North Bergen. You were so four months it, old? I was four months old when we went to North Bergen. I'll be darned. I never see. There's something I never knew. See, uh, so I was all over Hudson <laughs> County. <laughs> By four months old, I had the whole county. Uh, you know, I just kept on going north. And I ended up, and now I live in Bergen County, which I never thought I'd be rich enough to even have lunch in Bergen County growing up. But I have a, a nice home up here in Hillsdale, New Jersey. And um, yeah, so that's what, what I was born in Jersey City, Hoboken, North Bergen. That's the deal. Okay, but let's talk about your Hoboken roots first. Yes. Okay. And yep. you were born into basically athletic royalty because yes. of, uh, first of all, your grandfather and your great uncle were both yep. superstar basketball players. You bought, your, your grandfather was the immortal Bad Bill Bergen who yep. played on the Union City Reds, and so did your great uncle, t- Uncle Tony, whose real last name was Calandrillo, but he, he shortened it to Tony Kalan, and the, the I, two of them were basketball royalty who beat, they were on the team, I think it's 1939, they, the Union City Reds beat the old Boston Celtics that were coached by John, uh, 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 Joe Lapchick. So, um, well, you know what? I'm, I'm learning things here, but my uncle's name was Calandriello. Not to be confused with Calandr, uh, you know, Calandrillo? Danny Calandrillo. He okay. was Uncle Tony, uh, was Calandriello, and they used to call him Push Him Up Tony Calandr. Tony Calandr, right. But I, 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 you're all over it, Hagen, and, and I have nothing but, like, memories of just my grandfather being just a legend and my uncles and my aunts we, i'm a family guy and it started with my genes really and my mother's side of the family was very athletic and my father's side of the family was really very academic and i i, I didn't get those genes skipped a no, you, generation they, they missed you right over here <laughs> luckily trey got those you didn't get any of those yeah. trey got them all yeah. that's my son but yeah now my 
my family's and my mother, which I'm sure we'll talk about, was probably as athletic as anybody. She got it from from Pamp, and she was just a she was literally a tomboy before there were tomboys, and she used to go to the rec. Recreational center that was on Jefferson Street where Sinatra used to work out, and was uh, right across the street from their house where they exactly. grew up, where they all grew up. They lived next door to each other, and then the rec yep. center was right directly across the yep. street from where your your grandfather raised his family, and yep. where your mother used to break the gender barrier and go yep. and go, and go play basketball with the boys. No question. It's yeah. 116 Jefferson, and yeah. it was, it was, then it was named Jerry Malloy. It's named after Jerry Malloy now, which was in right. another, as you well know, and everyone in Jersey City and Hudson County knows, was the Toastmaster General. He was the Bill Raftery uh, before Bill Raff, and, and it's just amazing what we come from such a, 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 a incredibly sports minded, family oriented, you know, but place neighborhood and it, it just it still stays in our genes yeah no and it and it stayed with uh with you because of you know your mother was so involved with it and she was such a great fan your mother's first name was grace god rest yes you. uh as we fully well know she was amazing grace and yeah. um and your uncle bill bergen jr was also a great athlete he, and uh, unfortunately we just lost uncle billy um yep. i'm gonna say about two months ago and um and he was a, an incredible athlete in his right and played all three sports growing up in hoboken so you had no choice but to be an athlete because of your family background correct you know I, that's the truth and i wasn't anything like those guys i i wasn't you know and, and you met me hey get prep when i was young I, I played, but I wasn't great, but I loved it, and I dreamed it, and I think I just kind of, by osmosis, I, I became a scholarship athlete uh, at prep and went to Merrimack, and, and again, a man named Mel Logan helped me get from uh, from Jersey City High School to uh, Augustinian College at Merrimack, but I just loved it and hung out with guys that played, and Dave Vigiano, our mutual best friend, used to work at his game in basketball so hard, and I learned that, you know what, I better work hard too, and, and if he never went to five-star, I probably would not have gone to five-star basketball camp, and Ben Deneen, and Jerry Halligan, so many people helped me along the way, because when I was growing up, trust me, I'm, I was not as athletic or as, as good basketball players as that I'm coaching today, but uh, I just gravitated to that level because I, I just followed my dream. And in Hudson County, man, you, if you, if you don't follow your dreams in Hudson County, you wind up in other places. And right. I'm just lucky. That's true. I'm lucky that I, I I followed my dream. How about but how about growing up in North Bergen? Yep. And you played all three sports, organizationally wise. You know, you oh, played, you God. Played, and and I just talked to somebody recently, and I forget who it was. Who yep. said that you were the quarterback on the uh, yep. uh, on your recreation football team? Oh, uh, uh, on the Rams. I was. I went from a quarterback. This is when they found out I was. A, I went from quarterback to well, well, really just two positions. I was a quarterback, and then I was a um, a tight end. Oh my god, Tommy, Tommy Stinson, and I had. Hey, you know the hands I have. I don't drop anything. Right. But I was, but I wasn't. I wasn't the fastest dude. But I just loved running routes. And but I, you know, growing up and playing, you know, pee wee football and playing little league or minor league to little league baseball to 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 basketball and, and playing every sport, stickball, punch ball, stoop ball, all of that added up to becoming a you know a decent player and having a chance to you know get a scholarship and and in those days that's how you grew up man you had fights on the street and you, you you argued every call and what the score was it was a it was such as you well know and our listeners do it's such a competitive place to get a parking space to oh to just get a slice of pizza and get out of there and get on the bus and get on a train it's I think all that adds up to competitiveness, and that's what it takes in, you know, college basketball to win. And and you know, it's really I'm I'm a blessed you know coach, and I was a blessed kid, and I, and I always thought that I had the best friends 
and I had the best house and the best, like, I didn't know any better, you know right. what I mean? And, 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 and ultimately, I did. I, real, I, I did and have a great neighborhood and a great... Grew, where you grew up, Greg, it was a lot yeah. like, almost, I hate to say, it was yeah. almost like the suburbs, for God's sakes, because it was okay, a totally yeah. different realm, say, if you moved to, like, say, even Union City right next door, no, or right. then Jersey City, that was a totally different beast than what it was when you grew up in North no. Morgan. Well, North Bergen has, there's two North Bergen, say, you got to understand this. It's the Dave Vigiano, Mr. Vigiano that teaches high school, right. and it's a little Mayberry-ish, yep. but then there's another side of North Bergen, once you get to the 60s, the 50s, and once you get closer to the Jersey, and basketball brought us into that realm, right. you know what I'm saying? So we knew, and then I'll never forget going from North Bergen down to Jersey City and playing and, and the first time I played against an African-American that I remember, that I looked him in the eye and I said, okay, I'm covering you and you're covering me, was Brian Lee. Wow. My, my okay. former assistant, Dwayne Lee's dad. And, and it was just like... And what level was that, CYO? No, it was not until I got to, not until I got to high school. When oh. I was at CYO... You, I'm telling you, that's when I played Brian. You played on but, that. You played on that Biddy team that went to New Orleans. Well, we played against. Yeah, no, that's true. We played against Scott Lakewood was an all black team. But right. when I literally knew that, okay, here's my competition. It was Brian Lee as a freshman. I think it was in St. Paul's League outside. Right. But prior to that, the, the biggest competition. If we're getting into, you know, ethnicities and who you grew up against and who you grew up with. It was going to like West New York and playing a Lady of Libra yep. and playing a lot of Spanish kids, Puerto Rican kids, Cuban kids. Mr. Clay uh, Morell's teams, right? No, oh, Clay Morell at St. Augustine's. Yep. His press still is, I, I compare his press to Rick Patino's press okay. at Providence. That's how good it was. When you got into those little band boxes and we went to St. Michael's and played down there. But it just shows it was just a part of America in that, you know, Instead of going north to Bergen County, I always, you know, migrated south and played closer to Jersey City and to Hoboken and to Bayonne, right. and that was the real world. It was a mixture of every ethnicity, you know, known to man. And again, guess what? It comes back to it was competition. And and Danny Caladrillo lived down the down the hill, and we, I, I followed him around. He was about two or. Uh, People are still debating, Dave Vigiano, how old Danny Calandrillo actually is, or yeah, how well, old he, he was. On the record, he's two years older than us, but, you know. So, so two years, years when you're in, exactly, two years when you're a high school kid, that's huge. You huge. look up when you're a sophomore, back in the day, you looked up to seniors, and I would follow, we'd go to Hudson County Park, and run around the lake, and we'd go down to, oh, God, I'm drawing a blank, not Persian Field, but, um, on 16th Street in Union City, that we grew up uh, by the water school. Um, and mon the monastery field? Park we went, yeah, right by the monastery. I don't even know. But I went everywhere with the guy. And then it, we always wound up at the 79th Street Courts yeah. in, the, in the middle of the night, just shooting and playing one on one. And guess what? He wound up, he was really, really good. He wound up being the. Uh, the Big East Player of the Year, yep. you know, out of out of the streets of North Bergen, and, and scored seventy one points against St. Joe's in a high school basketball game. And uh, I never did that, but I no no no. I no. Did, okay. did you have seventy one okay. points your senior year? No, Danny Calandrillo had seventy one. No, points I'm saying did you have seventy one yeah. points your whole year. No, I'm joking. Uh, I'm joking. Maybe, maybe, maybe close. Yeah, but but talk a little bit about first. Was your first taste? of big-time competition, did that come at the age of 12 when you went with that bitty, that North Bergen oh, yeah. bitty team that went to New Orleans? Well, no, that's that's a great... My 13th birthday was April 2nd, and I think that's right when we were down there. Okay. Um, we played in, a, in the national tournament uh, in New Orleans, and Isaiah Thomas played for a Chicago team. Right. So, it was, no, it was, yeah, so then you get a, just a, a look at, like, oh, my God, okay, maybe I'm pretty good in, in on 79th Street or 82nd Street or 88th Street, but now this is this is the real deal. And then I went to five-star basketball camp. I got in luckily, hey. Right. Ben, ben Deneen called up Howard Garfinkel, and, and not only did I get in the five-star, this is a great story. Go ahead. I, I'm in the, I'm in the, 
the quarters where all the great players are and they're waiters. So the kids that didn't couldn't pay or were on scholarship waited tables. Is that true? So, really? Okay. And so I got into that dorm and in in that I shouldn't even say a dorm and, and basically it was an outdoor, you know, like it was like a, a camp. A campground like yeah. with, with screen doors, I'll never forget it. I get in my bed, okay, and I put my and there's a guy upstairs sleeping it's bunk beds, and his feet are just like flapped over the top bunk, two big, huge feet, and finally when the guy wakes up, now I really, I kind of knew him, but I didn't know him, it was Roosevelt Bowie oh, from, wow. Syrac from Syracuse, on my team was Dominique Wilkins, Right. so I was the point guard, Dominique was the five, and we lost in the championship game to Sam Bowie who was the five man for the other team and Rocket Rod Foster that uh, the, everyone will remember Rocket Rod who played at UCLA, UCLA. For, for Larry Brown. And Sam so Bowie there, has the distinction of being drafted ahead of Michael Jordan. Yes. How about that? <laughs> that's but, that's I mean, his legacy forever is that he got drafted ahead of Michael Jordan. Forever. Forever. And, and then I found out, oh my God, I'll never forget, I went, Back then, you made collect calls, and they made a collect call to Dave Vigiano and said, and everyone at the camp called Dominique um, Dom. That was his nickname. You know, for sure. You know, if you're going to be a you know a kid, you, you shorten your name, and it was Dom Wilkins. And I, I, I just remember, Hague, like it was yesterday, a shot went up, and I boxed out my guy, like at the elbow, and the ball went in the air. It was an orange, orange. You know those outdoor orange balls yep. went in the air. Rubber the ball. white back, the white backboard at Honesdale, Pennsylvania, and the orange ball in the lights was just sky high. And oh, I just remember Dominique just just jumping like five feet over everyone and got it. I'll never. I'm like, so I I went back to my dorm and I called my mother. Then I called Vidge. I said, Vidge, there's a guy. Dom Wilkins from North Carolina, and hey, when I tell you, Bobby Knight, Dean Smith, every high major coach in the world was watching our games. Obviously, they were recruiting them, and I'm dribbling the ball up and down the floor thinking these guys are Looking watching me. Yeah, and I was sadly, sadly mistaken once once the camp was over, and <laughs> uh, I, re I realized why they were watching our games. Okay. But anyway, go back to go back to the bitty, the bitty thing in, in in grammar school. And how much yeah. did that give you a little taste of like saying, okay, um, maybe I'm yep. pretty good at this if I'm on an all star team that's playing in a national championship? Well, this is this is a funny story as well. Yeah. In my office is the net that hung from the the semifinal game because that was the game that we had we had to beat Lakewood in the semifinals. No, no, timeout. I'm trying to think. Wait a minute. That was the earlier game. It was either, oh my God. It was either Lakewood or West New York. I'm going backwards, but they were two great teams. But we. You beat, beat them both in, of you beat them. either one of them in West, in New Orleans? They both went to New no, Orleans? No, 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 no. This was in, C, this was in uh, Seacock. This is in New Jersey. Okay. To get to, to, get to New Orleans. Right. So there's like 11 seconds to go. Timeout. They run a play, and somehow the ball comes to me, and I shoot it. And I think it's in. I made the shot a million times, and I missed it. And sure enough, Hague is talking about his second chance. A kid from North Bergen or Hoboken or Jersey City, the ball comes right back to me. It hits the back rim. It comes back to me, and I catch it and shoot it and make it at the buzzer. And we win the game, the semifinals. And literally, it was the probably it was the highest point of my athletic career. The, the, the whole stands, everybody, just, it was nuts. Danny Calatrol was at the game, came on the floor, put me up in, up in the air, and to this day I have the net that's in my office. You have the Dickinson. net from that game? Yes. That's I'll take a picture. Right now we're quarantined, but I'll take a picture in the Jersey Journal. Mike, The late Mike Rowan yep. asked me after the game, he goes, Craig, you made the shot to win the biggest game in North Bergen, whatever, whatever. And he said, how do you feel? And my brother Bill loves this quote. It's a great quote. It's short and sweet. He said, Mike, it feels good. <laughs> and that was what was in, <laughs> and that was what, that's what was in the papers, Mike. The quote to end quotes. It feels but, yeah, good. 
And then Mike Rowan comes on the... So now I go back to Horace Mann the next... I, on Monday, it was right around now, I'm telling you. Yeah, the anniversary right. was right around St. Patrick's. I go back to the school, and I am like... And we all are gods, but that shot, made, we took... That shot enabled us, if it doesn't go in, we go home. Puts 13 kids on a plane that I don't think any one of us had been on a plane. Dave Vigiano, Chris Daly, Vinny Zora, Tommy Stinson, Coco Espinosa, Don Murkovich. Wow. All these guys, we get on the plane to go to New Orleans in this school Steve for Greco? a week, Haig. Yeah. Stevie Tuffy Greco, yep. Dennis Colangelo. Dennis Colangelo, okay. All those guys, and next thing you know, we're in New Orleans, Louisiana, playing against Isaiah Thomas. So you yeah. just can't. We actually didn't play Isaiah's team, but he was in the, the he tournament. was in the tournament, yeah. and uh, it's just yeah, it's just those memories. That then that, and you're right. Your question was that it give me the impetus. Or the, yeah, it's like okay, I I might be able to be good, but I never I never. Th- I never knew how good I was going to be because everyone was better than me. Okay. When I grew up, I played my brother Anthony was the best athlete in our family. You know, I couldn't beat him. And then we played up to up at 90, uh, 79th Street Park. And I was playing against 28-year-old guys that were truck drivers. That was just, <laughs> just, And they would beat me. And then, you know, then I went to prep and I was a freshman. I never... It's hard. And growing up is, you know, it, it's, it's tough back then in those days it wasn't easy then i went to prep and i wasn't the smartest guy by far the great prep story that i'll give you now they were telling uh hudson county stories well, is that, all, before you get into that Greg, yeah tell, tell how much of a struggle it was for yep. you to be a north bergen kid and decide yep. to go to st peter's prep and right. how, how difficult was that north bergen's basketball program at that time yep. was one of the best in the county and yep. you could have played on the same team that played for two county championships and instead yep. you decided to go to prep how tough of a decision no, was that I, w- I was i was vilified going to high school because not that i was recruited at all to go to prep my parents no. wanted me to go to get a catholic education and i wasn't recruited to go to north bergen but what happened was like i was a decent player and hey you know where i live i lived on 78th street and and, and North Bergen High School on 76th Street. When I waited for the bus, I literally could see the high school that I would have went to. Instead, right. I took a bus, you know, from North Bergen to Journal Square, and then took the subway to Grove Street, and then walked, you know, further than it is from my house to North Bergen to get there. So it wasn't. It was really difficult. Door to door, get, door to door took about an hour and a half, right? I maybe less on okay. a good day, and you had to. But I still have welts on my head, man, because I used to put my head up against the window on the bus <laughs> and then and fall asleep and then just you would whack your head all the way up Ber- you know Kennedy, Kennedy Boulevard. Boulevard okay I'll never forget once that I, I fell asleep and I went past I went up to Nungesser's and the guy woke me up and I woke up and I was in one of these everyone's had those dreams where you don't know where you are but literally I didn't know where I was and then he says you know I'll take you back because I'm doing the route and I had to go quick so I went past 79th street went up to nongasters and the guy wanted me to pay and i'm like i'm not i'm not paying man you should <laughs> well you probably didn't so have you, the money to pay him anyway i didn't have no money yeah it right. was 35 cents that's right. what it was for yep. to take and it was 30 cents for the path so yep. it was 65 cents a day yep. which that costs money you know and it's you know 65 cents you know today is probably four or five bucks right. who knows what what it equates to but but was there uh, any? Dis- so it was hard. Did you have to? You know, did you, was there any discussion at all with your parents about None. when you were going to high school, or they said to you, "Greg, boom, you're going to St. Peter's." Prep. You know, it's what? funny. I don't even really remember it. And again, Dave Vigiano comes into because he was going to prep, and the guy that went to prep and was selling me and recruited me to go to prep was a a, a, a gentleman named uh, or a Kenny boy Bellaney. at that point in time is Kenny Bellaney. Yeah, he went to prep, and his father. Coach Bellaney, who comes to our uh, games now, his father um, was my CYO coach that's at Alania right, Fatima. Right, right, yeah. yeah. If, uh, so, I'll, so I'll it, uh, but I, I, back then, I, you know, you're going to disagree and people disagree, but inside I was a very quiet, like, kid that didn't have a lot of opinions and, like, I just wasn't sure. And I just kind of, like, 
put faith in my parents just wanted me to go so it wasn't like I was fighting it and then I thought it was well, kind of let, let me ask you and and I'm and if this is too personal a question yeah but, well, yeah, but your no. brother Anthony your brother Anthony went to prep and unfortunately yes. he was dismissed from prep and he had to go yes. to Del Barton as a senior um, yes uh, so was there any bad you know discussions like okay well you can't go to prep because Anthony was dismissed from there and it had nothing to yes. do with his academics he was a very bright student but he no. did something really stupid and we don't do do we want to say what Anthony did or we'll leave it go not not really but he was he was he was asked to leave and then he wound up going to to Del Barton right and, and then he went to Notre Dame so it just shows how bright he brought and bright how was. smart and he was a good like he was he was he a was great, a great pitcher, athlete, Hank. better athlete than you are, that's for sure. No question, yeah. a great quarter, quarterback, quarterback pitcher right. and, and point guard. Right. So he played played three sports, and then when he went to Notre Dame, he, he was going to pitch. He almost went to Manhattan to pitch. But then, you know, you know, back in the day, it wasn't like it is now with Scholar. He just was, and was a great student, had a successful career and, and so forth and so on okay. so when i went to prep i didn't so was have there the, any I, negative I, negative oh, connotation from your family no. about you know anthony what? getting dismissed from prep so this is what happened and i was a young boy when when he was dismissed so when i got there i didn't even think about it but so then when all the priests and, and the teachers are doing roll call and they would get to my name they would say horrenda and i and then all of a sudden they would look at me and i'm like and they said, Horrenda? Is your brother Tony Horrenda? And I said, yeah, I'm proud of my brother. And they were like, and then they just kind of gave me the look. Like, <laughs> okay, we got a Horrenda. And really, I would say, I didn't meet one person that didn't really like my brother. My brother no, did a, a, a liked stupid your, thing. Everybody liked your brother. No. <laughs> and he was really bright, and, and people didn't want him to leave, and so forth and so on. So, But, but the biggest thing, on top of my brother, is that, and the story I was gonna tell. What? I think we and if I had, do. I have Greg, permission to I tell think, this story. I think, we, I think we have to say now what caused Anthony to get dismissed from prep. What do you think? I. That's it's your show, but I, I'm not going to. Can I say it then? It's your show. This is America. Okay. Well, Anthony was Anthony was dismissed from prep because he streaked in the cafeteria. That's now think about it. If he would have done something like that today, there's right. no way in the world he would have been dismissed. He probably no. would have gotten jugged for two weeks, and that would have been it. But a guy who was a three sport yeah. athlete who ran across the cafeteria with no clothes on, and in an era when everybody was taking their clothes off and running everybody because they were sneaking with yep. pool. Uh, and he got dismissed for it. It was it was pretty bizarre to be. Oh honest. no no! It was and I like I said I was so young. I I never knew really what happened until many years afterwards. To be very honest with you, right? And it, it didn't help that it was during the SATs, though. Hey, no, that that's was true. that was that, <laughs> that was that might have affected some kids' yeah, lives yeah, really, well, when, when they got into school. Well, especially if they were if they, if they took the SATs like we did, and there were girls there. Right. Oh, that blew my mind. That's really yes. one of the reasons why I did so poorly in the SATs. Right, because, because there were girls girl was there. sitting next to us. Right. I was. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. I, I so hey, when I when, I'll never forget this. So I, my brother asked me when I get to prep who I have for lat, and I look at my schedule, and you know how all the classes are abbreviated, so like you can't, you know, it doesn't say uh, if it's you know. Uh, Western Civ, it's just W S I V, whatever. Right. So I'm looking and I don't see anything that has an L on it. And I'm like, Anthony, because everybody at prep took Latin and he wanted to know who I had. Was it Father Rapido or what, what you know, Father what Jesuit Murray. priest? Yeah. Father Murray, I had him for English. But so sure enough, I'm looking, I'm like, yes, I don't have, I don't have Latin on my schedule, but I do have, and it's, I'll never forget it, D V. <laughs> E-N-G. And I'm like, what is this? And I, when I tested in, I guess my English scores weren't as good. They put me in developmental English. Right. Well, there were two reasons why I think that happened, Greg. And I'm going, okay, to, tell I'm, me. I'm going to know about your life. Okay, here we go. Um, tell me. I think the reason why is that because you did not take the entrance test. You didn't go down to prep to take the entrance test. They took it from your from from your high school. And so then that naturally, then if they, you didn't have... A uh, an entrance test at all? They just put Wait you in that class. You're t why? How do you? Uh, 
I took the entrance test. The prep. Why? Who no, no, not, the, not the general it? entrance test. No, no, right. no. Like to right. get accepted okay. into prep. But there was. <laughs> but once you got there, they took right. like a, you know, like they they took a test yeah. to see where you got placed. And I don't think you took that test, so they just clumped you with everybody else in developmental. Yeah, well, that that could have been, but it was a it was an absolute. Because, we, was, because D, 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 we used to make fun of DE because the, the students that all had DE were not the good students. They were all oh, well, needed no. developmental it was, help. Yeah, it was all it was all the kids from the HAP program, right. which gave so much. With Father Brown, he gave so many kids opportunities, and they were. It just happened to be all the good basketball players. We had a great like when we had, you know. Recess I, I, period. We had recess with that class. We had Dante Johnson and Evans and right. myself and Nick. So, but but the big Nikki Kapakis, The biggest thing about that class was the teacher and Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and it's literally that's what his name was. Mr. Rogers yep. was just an. I remember him having me talk about an apple, and I would see. He said, "Haranda, describe the apple," and I would say, "Oh, it's a." beautiful it's a nice red apple and he's like you're boring me horrenda <laughs> you're boring <laughs> the word vivacious and scrumptious and <laughs> and like he made he made you think and he made you uh open your mind and he made my vocabulary better and now i have a, a radio show i'm i'm on the the jim a podcast i've been on the jim rome show right Francesa. Oh, we'll get to that uh, in a second. All that became, stuff. You were a media it, darling a couple of years ago. Wow. And, oh, it, but, and it really just kind of like goes back to that class. And I remember Mr. Francesa. He was my seventh grade English teacher at Horace Mann. He was another guy that was just brilliant. I mean, till this day, I just remember all of my teachers. And when I talk to my students and my players at when I lecture or when I talk to my guys in the locker room, I'm like, these teachers that I had and that you have, you have to just appreciate them because they had Mr. Menzer was my music teacher at Horace Mann. And I didn't learn that much music, but what I learned was to just love the music and appreciate music. And music's a big part of my life. And, you. Uh, and, and just some math teachers, Mr. Waldner. Like, when you, when you have these teachers that... You know, in history with, with uh, Mr. Stone, with Western Civ, when I went Beowulf, and I remember Mr. Kennedy in English. I remember these guys, hey, like it was yesterday, because I sat in class, and I never thought I was worthy to be at prep, because I was always like, you know what, I'm really not as smart as the kid. Because the kid next to me went to Brown, and the, the kid on the other side went to Rensselaer. Yeah. And I'll never, I'll never forget Father Bauer saying to me, Horenda, do you have your application in? I said, Father, I, I haven't applied to any colleges yet, but um, he says, no. <laughs> he says, no, not for college, but for that Sabret umbrella truck that you're going to be driving around town. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, he was like, so you, I never got a lot of academic, and I wasn't a bad student, Hagen, and I wasn't, a, 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 as uh, Father Murray would say, I wasn't a dummy. But I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't um, to the par of, we had a lot of Ivy League. We had some really, real, Larry, Larry hey, how smart was Larry Ricapa? All right. I mean, these guys were brilliant guys, and I understood that. And I think at the end of the day... Mark Dolan got a perfect score on the SAT. Mark Dolan! Mark Dolan got a perfect score on the SAT. And I always compared myself to those guys, and there were some guys at prep that... I was a little smarter then, but but I always looked at the really smart ones, and I, that's why I was really smart at the end of the day because I knew greatness. Right. And being a college recruiter and being a coach is identifying talent, and and I knew I was around talent at prep, and there was no one more talented at prep than the teachers that we had. Right. The Jesuit, the Jesuit education that we got. Maybe I didn't learn everything, but I learned what we need to learn, and that's to be a man for others and to give back and to to do things for 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 people and in this Amen. time with the the virus that's that's going around there's no other time that's more important that you can help your neighbor and help your relative and and do the right things and and i, I think and that, that education that you had and i had and fidge had and 
Rakapa had it just stays with with all of us. Well, there's no question, and you and you hit it on the head, a man for others, and it's probably the probably the single. I say it's probably the single best decision that I ever made in my life because it wasn't easy for me, even though I lived in Jersey City. It wasn't easy for me to get from the Greenville section of Jersey City exactly to to to, to prep every single day, and I used to take the the number nine bus, which was nine, uh, yeah, which was like the. Um, it was like taking a tour of Jersey City. If you wanted to take, like, it went through everything and everybody to get to prep, and it took an hour lunch. and a half. It was ridiculous. You had to watch your lunch money. I know. Yeah, I no. know. It wasn't right. easy. So, well, unfortunately, you, uh, we weren't the most successful of athletic programs when you were at the, went there, but you uh, mm-hmm. excelled tremendously and to the point where you were hitting. Uh, strides that nobody else did in certainly in our, not in our class and not anybody before that in the fact that you were starting varsity as a sophomore and um and you ended up being a three-year varsity starter and how how you know how blessed were you hey, to be able to start hey, I, hate to do, I hate to do this on your show but i'm gonna correct you again go ahead correct me i sophomore year i played jv you did i sat varsity I played JV. I did not. I was. I, I tell you, I wasn't good. I mean, I was good, like player. But I. But I. When we had some good teams before us. But no, I played JV my varsity. Excuse me. I played JV my sophomore year. Wow. And then my junior year. Ta, uh, Tommy Jeff Favier. Favier uh, Jeff Favier broke his hand. And, and his ankle. Yeah. And guess what? That's how, the only reason I started, and that's the only reason I really, that's the moment where my game, like, that was the pivotal moment. Was I good enough to start and contribute on a good team my junior year, and I was able to make that jump. And and he did it, Hague, like the day before, like, we started playing games and yep. stuff. So I was like, it, I was Johnny on the spot. I was really very fortunate. Now that you and now that I, you say that, Greg, I, now I, now I fully remember that you played on you played JV with Ben, with ben Deneen as your coach, and uh, and you played on the team with Vidge, and that's when Vidge went off against Ferris, and and we yeah, no, yeah. started that for three years. <laughs> uh, still to this day, he wakes up and that's all he thinks about is that, that thirty ben. that thirty five point I, explosion against Ferris in Ferris. Yeah, I, I tell Vidge. All the time, I go, Vidge, You really only had one shining moment your entire life, <laughs> <laughs> and it was when he was a sophomore. And, and again, he never gives me credit. Neither does Joe Dixon when I went to Merrimack, because I gave the ball to Vidge like in the perfect spot, yep. and he just went on fire. And if anyone's played at Ferris back in the day, Ferris was like dimly you didn't lit. Win. It was they played defense, yep. and they were like nasty. And uh, Vigis, one shiny moment came in uh, on that afternoon at at, at Ferris. It so awesome. it was uh, all right, but th- but but playing yep. uh, playing varsity at an earlier age than most yeah. did. How much yeah, did that maybe then, give you a little yeah. confidence that you could play even even though you're on a bad team senior year? How much yeah. did that give you a little bit of confidence knowing fully well that you could play at the next level? Yeah, I just think. Yeah, because we played such good teams. Like, right right there, like Lincoln was incredible. incredible. Like Charlie Brown, Tom Favia at at Ferris. Yep. You know, we went to Bayonne. I'm drawing a blank on the head coach of Bayonne. Oh, man. Oh, Arnie. I mean, it was just an absolute, you know, like. And, and Mav- Mavis was- had Freddie Calabrese. And of course, Freddie Calabrese. And of course, you know Matty Sabello went up in North Bergen. And, 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 and uh, what you would call it? And Hank, Hank Carano, Carano who at Emerson. Goes to my church up here yeah. is one of the great. He was the uh, my sponsor, my, my son's sponsor. For his confirmation. Is that so, true? Hank Morano was Trey's sponsor? Yes. Oh, that's it, awesome. What, that is that's really incredible. Awesome. When, hey, when, when I went to church, and we, David, yeah, I keep on bringing up Vidge because my life was just me and Vidge were part of each other's life. I saw Coach Morano at church, and I'm like, oh, my God. And my wife is like, what is wrong? And I'm like, that is Coach Morano. So we went over. Does, does Vidge go to the same church as you do? No, no. Oh. Vidge, no, no, Vidge is in Glen Rock. So right. I just told my wife. So we went back and he, I was like so happy that he remembered me. He's like, Greg, I'm following your career. I'm 
I'm so proud. So for Hank Morano to acknowledge me it was like, and then we've become really close friends. And then Trey needed a sponsor. And we're, when we first moved, kind of a little bit up in northern, and I'm like, I said, hey, I said, uh, Trey, Mr. Morano would be a tremendous man to sponsor you. And Trey asked him. And, and Mr. Morano and his wife were awesome that day, and they accepted, and we had him over to the house for dinner after confirmation. Oh, that's it was, incredible. I did not know that yeah. either. See, that's great. Yeah. Hank is a so, phenomenal man who uh, I got to know from working my days at the dispatch. Yes. And, uh, and I just spoke to him, I guess, last year because Union City High School won the county. That's right. And, um, his and son that was the is first the coach. time ever. And Drew is, his, Drew, his son, is the coach. So yeah. I, I called Hank to ask him about how proud he was for, about Drew and what have you. So, you know. And Hank, hey, I, I just have to, like, I know we're going up in my career and we'll eventually get to it. But, like, just think about, like, prep with George Blaney. Yep. At, you know, and became my mentor at Holy Cross at Seton Hall and then Bob Hurley went to prep and used to rebound for George Blaney and then I went to you know White Eagle Hall so it's just like our whole life like if I would have went to North Bergen I would have had probably you know different friends and different you know teachers and different and it would have been great but I, I like like you said before I wouldn't change anything for anything in the world. Okay, good. All right, so and Jerry Halligan. I mean, Jerry come Halligan, on, man. the immortal Jerry Halligan. And he yeah. lived. Jerry lives where we're in Hillsdale. He's in Harrington Park. His wife still lives. Uh, Pat lives up in Harrington Park, Jerry, and we see her. Jerry, so it's, Jerry Halligan's wife still with us. Yes. Oh, that's and great. And she looks great and comes to our games. Hey, you know, oh, our wow. games are like Hudson County, like revivals. It's amazing how many people come from. Uh, from North Bergen, Hoboken, and, and, and all over to, to, to support me and, and our team. Well, that's a, a lot of that. I mean, 90% of the reason is because of you. That's so that, that, I mean, it's, I don't think they'd be going after you right. just well, strictly because yeah, of that. I, that I, still owe, I still owe some of the money, so they keep on coming. They, yeah, they that's right. Yeah, you, you borrowed money back then. You know, to, all right, so anyway, um, you get a chance, um, and briefly, they flirted with you a little bit. St. Peter's College recruited you a little bit and yep. promised you, I guess, the moon. Uh, but they didn't give you a they didn't give you a piece of paper that was your college scholarship. Uh, how right. in the world did Merrimack come into play? How did that come? How does it well, get from going to end up there? Let's go to St. Peter's first. Go ahead. St. Bob Duquette yeah. brought me on campus for an unofficial visit and showed me around the campus. This is a great, great story. I know I've been saying that all day, but I've got Good. some great stories. Sure. So he showed me campus, and then he's like, Greg, I knew that we were going to work me out. So sure enough, um, it's like, yeah, okay, now we get back to the gym. I put my stuff on. It's funny because I went to Coach Hurley's camp at uh, Yanitelli Center, right. and, and I'm getting ready, and Bob Duquette was a legendary coach that went on to Marquette and yeah. was at Princeton. Brilliant man and great coach. Right. Starts feeding me shots, and I start taking shots, and I'm making shots. Here, like, what about when people play defense on you? What do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, I, if, if they're not on me, I shoot it. If they're on me, I kind of shot fake and go by. And so he said, so the next thing you know, hey, I'm playing one on one with Bob Duquette. Wow, you know? I didn't know that. And he, and he was a good, tough player. He was right. really. I want to say he went to. I think he went to Princeton. I know he coached no, there. No, he didn't. Co he didn't go to Princeton. Where did he, he go? Went to, he went to Boston University. Or BU. Okay, yeah. good. He's a really good player and physical. And the next thing you know, like he's pushing all. Like we're going at. <laughs> we're going at it. And uh, and I did well. Like I did okay. And, and but he was tough. I remember like being this. This guy's no joke. And at the end, they offered me a uh, scholarship to go, but only a partial. Like I couldn't live. Not that there was a lot of on campus housing, if any. Right. But they offered me like basically tuition. And my mother, my father passed uh, my junior year at prep. And my right. mother just wanted me to get out of like to get out of Jersey City, get out of Hudson County, and, and go away. And then the, the two other schools, and you remember the one, <laughs> on the infamous visit to Scranton. I So I got, I got recruited by Division One, Two, and Three. The, the one was St. Peter's, the two was Merrimack. The, the, the most, the best visit that we ever had was the 
the, the strand visit egg, which was just absolutely incredible. When you think about visits in this day and age, how high tech they are and yep. organized, and we took my my mother's ele- my father's really right. Electra vehicle and drove it out to Scranton and we both went on the visit together and had <laughs> so much fun it's, it's hard oh, to even fathom the battle. first time I ever had a Genesee cream ale was that weekend you know? yeah exactly <laughs> and, it was uh, like... and the two guys that we stayed with were both prep guys uh, Tommy Egan and uh, Eric Kreish and, oh, you got the best memory ever and incredibly had. what they did was they put their two beds together and I think you slept in between the two of them, and I was on the floor. Yes, that's our <laughs> official visit. Yes, yeah. that was, yeah. And that's all we'll talk about that visit. That's we we want to go get no. in any more trouble. No, and, but and, then, and then it was like... You were fortunately but, driving home. You, uh, yes. you, had a, you had some sort of a knee swell up. Yeah, you my drive. knee blew up. That was... And you drove. I had to drive, but that was the driver. first time I ever drove a car with power brakes. <laughs> so... <laughs> So That's the first right. time I stepped, you were laying in the back with the knee up, yes. right? And you were icing That's your right. knee, and I'm driving. You said, you could drive this car? Hey, I said, yeah, I could, I could drive it, no problem. And then the first time I just tested, I pumped the brakes, and it jammed oh, on it. You went flying God. off the back seat, and you go, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. And it just, that was I nuts. I had to drive all the way back from Scranton in your father's car and with the, with the power brakes, the first time I ever drove a power brake. Oh, God. What but really, Mel, Mel Logan, who somebody out there will remember Mel Logan was a was basically they called them back in the day bird dogs that would look and he found Eddie Murphy that went to Merrimack who was the all time leading scorer he found myself Blaze Cancro went to Merrimack and Joe Joe Dixon so four guys that went there and and the gentleman's name is Mel Logan and he was connected I never met the man ever in my life and here's the story the guy who got you into Merrimack you never met? Because the head coach, Frank Monahan, would knew Mel Logan. Mel Logan would just call him up and say, listen, this kid, Horenda, take a look at him. He's point guard. He knows how to play, whatever, whatever. So this is the greatest story ever, Hey, Okay, here we go. We're at Pershing Field. We're playing in the summer league. And I'm you, playing you on the Holy, the Cross, Holy Cross, Cross Crusaders. And, and Mr. Mackey is coaching head coach. the game. Oh, yeah, sure. And we're playing against... Trapuca? Kelly Chapuca, and I, and he had a, a, a boatload of players. Right, Edgar I'm Jones. In the game. Ed, so, so I'm, Kelly Chapuca and Edgar Jones were on the same summer league team up in Pershing Field. It's amazing. So now yeah. here I am, and I'm like, uh, I just graduated from prep. Right. My mother comes to the game, and Frank Monahan, the head coach from Merrimack, comes to the game. I want to go at this juncture. This is where I really remember where I wanted to go. You wanted to go I home? wanted to go to St. Peter's because... That year, they were going to play NC State and Maryland in the Garden. Yep. And my goal was always to play in Madison Square Garden. It mm-hmm. still is to coach there, and I have coached as an assistant. I want to get there as, as a head coach. So, but I, I'm playing in the game, and I really want to go to Mer. I want to go to St. Peter's. And hey, I played one of these games where everybody forgot about me, and I made like Chris Potter was on our team yep. from Holy Cross, a great player. That I made like jump shot, jump shot. I dropped a dime, and and I I got the respect of some really good players. Yep. Chris Mullen, Chris Mullen, Chris Mullen played, played that on that yep. Holy Dwayne Johnson yep. from from New from York Washington. City. It was just amazing all the good players. But I was able to coexist. And when I was done with the game, my mother was in the stands, and she says, "Greg." You go because Merrimack hadn't offered me yet. No, okay. So you you go over there and find out if they're offering you a scholarship. And of course, I listen to my mother. I turn around and I walk, and I'm kind of like, oh, it's not an easy thing to do. But I go to coach, and he, he and coach was he was great. Frank Monahan, and it was a tremendous coach up in New Hampshire, and then uh, at Merrimack College. I said, coach. You know, my mother needs to know, you know, because now it was the summer league. It was like June. I still don't know where I was going. Yeah, no. I said, are you going to offer me a scholarship or not? I need to know. And he goes, Greg, we're offering you a full scholarship to go to Merrimack College. We want you to come, and we're, we're really, really excited about you. You were awesome today. You can definitely play for me in the whole nine yards, the recruiting pitch. Okay. And for some reason, he didn't go talk to my mother. But when I was done talking to him, hey, I turned around. I had to go back to my mother now and report. 
the whole walk back, I was going to tell her that he didn't offer me a scholarship because I wanted to go to St. Peter's. Wow. I, I could have gotten that done, but I just looked in my mother's eyes and I just could not lie to my mother. I, I, so I told her I got a scholarship. She started crying. I started crying. We hugged each other. And that's how I went to Merrimack College, wow. by, having, by having that good game and just telling my mother the truth. And uh, I really kind of still wanted to go, um, you know, to St. Peter's. But, I, I you know, again, I, I don't look back at all. Frank Monahan gave me the opportunity. And, uh, and I, rem- I, I remember that game in the Summer League really, really bad. Uh, the other guys that were on that team, Tommy Senkowitz, I think, was on that was on your team. And, uh, oh, yeah. Marty was Pentagrass was on that team. And, yep. uh, and uh, you said Chris Potter. And, and you were unconscious that yeah. game against Kelly well, Trapuca and Edgar Jones. Everyone, that was my one shiny moment. Yeah. No, well. <laughs> Yeah, but but you had well, no. First of all, at prep you made uh, second team all county or second team at least all south as a senior, yep. right? Um, yep. And and you made. Oh, no, no, I was okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and you had, and you had made thirty three free throws in a row. We were, I had we were, to. We were, my mother, my mother would have disbarred me. She would have. She wouldn't feed me. That was her big thing. You can't miss your free throws. Right. And. Uh, but that, no, was, that's that was a school I record. Had. That was a school record. Thirty-three free throws in a row. So, and they and they a drew up. They drew a caricature of you in the Jersey Kaz, Journal. Kaz Rakowski. Well, he didn't draw it. Kaz didn't draw it. Maybe he. Maybe he. Kaz took a liking to you big time. Exactly. And, and he also that's he, how coached, I got... he coached an All Star team. Yes. Took you to, Who did took the you to Connecticut. Who did the drawing, Shake? Um, I forget. I think, it, I think it was a guy by the name of Stark. I don't remember his last, first name, but it was. But he did that. They Travis were unbelievable. Thing. Yeah, he was. It was. And if you got on. one of those done, that was big. Like yep. you know, that that was big. Yep, that was really huge. You know, with 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 you, with the picture of your face, and then there'd yeah. be like three little like cartoon right. characters are saying, Greg just broke the St. Peter's Prep record for 33 free throws in a row, right. and he's averaging 16.9 points per game, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was great. Yeah, that was, cool. that was like, yeah, that was, that was, I'll that never, was, that I'll was, never forget that Jersey Journal when they were, because it was, the, 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 the portrait was right directly on the fold. So I opened up the Jersey Journal, and I looked at that picture, and I said, God, that looks a lot like Horrenda. And then, and then all of a sudden, I had to open up the fold. I said, it is Horrenda. You know, and I was like, that, that, that was, you know, right there on the front page of the sports section of the Jersey Journal. That was that had to be a huge throw. That, that, was, that was huge, man. Okay. It really was. All right, so now you go to Merrimack, and you had a great career. And you still have arrest assist records that still stand at the school, correct? Yeah. All right. I had tw- 20 and, and in a great- game? 22, 22, and I'll never forget the the, my, my, the one assist, that, and I was just always, that was what I could do, Hank. Like, I just knew where people were going to be, and I knew where the good players were, and I knew where what I could do and what I couldn't do. And I'll never forget, Casey Jones' son, his name is Kip Jones, played for Bentley in that game. Okay. And it was like a secondary break, and I was... Be two weeks in between on this one, and I was like, gonna pull up for a jump shot. And I showed like the pull up, and Kip Jones flew out at me, and he was athletic. Is obviously, you know, Casey was an Olympian, you know, Boston Celtic, St. Francisco, Don, and right. the whole nine yards. So, so Kip flies out at me, hey, and opens his legs and uh, puts his arms, and I throw a bounce pass in between his legs as Joe Dixon was cutting to the basket wow. and to really put the game away and we beat Bentley which was our arch rival and uh and 22 yeah, so assists would, in one game wow that's amazing I had 20, now, now this is the funny part and you could appreciate this to this day everyone is like because obviously Merrimack this year had an incredible team at Javaris Hayes and I always kid Javaris that yo man you're never going to get 22 you're not going to catch me and he's like I'm going to get 22 we show each other but uh, the statistician in that game, you know him very, very well. Guess who the statistician was in the in the uh, Merrimack Bentley game for 22 assist game? Billy Burt. You got it, brother. See? And he was a, a great guy. And right? for that reason, I put him in my wedding party. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the best assist at all. It had nothing to do with the fact that he was a cl- one of your best friends in college. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And 
then here's the thing that I tell my players at FDU. I'm like, yo, dude, I averaged nine assists a game. Right. So, like, these guys get five or six or, like, you know, uh, you know I've had, you know, and I'm not, trust me, I'm not blowing it up, but I had multiple double-doubles. Right. 14, 14, 14 assists 10, and 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. So, but I, I just love, even to this day, and I tell, you know, when I lecture, I tell uh, kids and, and, and campers and high school kids that, like, the great ones can pass. Like, you know, you look at Tom Brady, obviously, today, you know, just, you know, he's, well, he's not going to be with the Patriots, but the, the great passers, like Nate Archibald, led the NBA in scoring and assists. Wayne Gretzky was a great passer. Like that little, the double play yep. between the shortstop and the second baseman, that aspect of two guys working together, to me, always excited me. And that's, that's really what I was best at. And I just appreciate guys that can play with other people and make other people better and that's what I really was good at because I was never the really the good player when I played you know in that game I had great you know Chris Mullen and you know, you know that's right Dwayne Anderson went to went to Marquette Dwayne these Johnson, guys were yeah. Dwayne Johnson. I mean excuse me Dwayne Johnson yeah. went, to went to Marquette, Marquette. so it's uh, I, I've been blessed by the fact that I, I always played with really, really good players alongside me, and you played against some really great players throughout your career too. You know, you uh, you, you know, you mentioned Brian Lee before. You mentioned, uh, I mean, your I senior Brian year in, in 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 high school, there were point guards or uh, just guards galore. Uh, through Ricky, a, through Ricky, all Ricky, Ricky Sumter, man, right. that, the small guard I hated to play right. against. Because they would just get up in you. Like the bigger guards, you can kind of, you know, you just knew how to play. But Ricky the small Sumter guards, and Tony Epps in the same backcourt. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, God. They were just, they were great. Really, that, really... That, well, Lincoln won the county that year with, with Ricky yeah. Sumter, Tony Epps, and Tommy Best were the. Were the Tommy, yeah, no Tommy God. Best, right? But North Bergen had Stevie Greco, and Marist had, like you said, Blaze Cancro, and, my, and Brendan Pearson, and. Bayonne uh, had uh, Jimmy Shakey and, oh, and Jimmy Dwayne Shakey. Williams and 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 uh, yeah. Dwayne Williams, who I had on my podcast a couple weeks ago, and uh, Vinnie Gale's what a little bit Lester? older. Was that Lester? Uh, was it Rob? Lester Harris? Lester Harris. Lester God, Harris, God, Lester God, Harris at Ferris and and, um, and and St. Anthony's had uh, Donald Pike. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the, I remember, I, well, Mandy, well, Mandy, Mandy Johnson was, was a little younger than Mandy, us. Yeah. And Phil, Phil, uh, Phil Jamison, uh, Phil Robinson. And, Phil Robinson. Uh, Phil Robinson. Yeah. And, uh, you were going to, uh, the Snyder had, uh, Phil Jamison and, uh, Antoine, uh, oh God, what the hell? Antoine Addison, not Raphael, Raphael Addison's oh, older God. brother. But Dwayne, remember, I tell my players to this day, hey, the only guy that ever, I, I my shot blocked. Twice by Booby in my Richardson. entire life, I always tell him those no, Dwayne Lilly. Remember, remember Dwayne, Dwayne Lilly? Lilly. Was, he had nothing but arms. That's all he long was. Long left, arms. long lefty. Yep. And, tell, and the other guy that blocked my shot was John Bagley at Boston College. Boston College. Like, okay. See, I had a layup. I was like going in. And I thought there's no way this guy can get it. And he got it. And Bagley was a great NBA player for great a while. Great NBA player, physical for his but size. But he didn't really yeah. jump. He was kind of like a heavy set like yeah. guard. He got up and he got me. Yeah, he got you. Well, it's, it's not nothing bad about getting you blocked, you know, especially with those right. names you, you mentioned. So, right, right. All right. Was it at Merrimack, Greg, Did you got the idea that you wanted to be a coach? Did you know at that point you wanted to be a coach, or did that just happen? You know, like, when, like when you first started in school, did you aspire to be no, I don't know, no. a student or, or a business manager major or something? Right? I, no, I wanted – I, I, I as I was like, mm, I could play professional basketball at some level. I'll never forget this. When I was done, I wanted to play. I wanted to go to Europe and play. And Ed Hastings was our chaplain. He played at Villanova, played on the Final Four in Villanova. He was a great player. He was a priest. And he said, Father, I'd love to play. I, said, I know some people that play. And I said, but, you know, you need a connection. I said, well, who, who, who's the connection? He goes, well, I can call Coach Massimino. He knows a lot of people in Europe. And I'll never forget it. He put me on the phone with Raleigh Massimino. Wow. 
and I, I spoke to him, and he's nice enough to talk to me, but at that point, I knew, I, he's like, Greg, well, how many points, and I told him what I did, he's like, no, Greg, I heard about you, Eddie tells me you can play, you can play, but, but, you know, like, that, that's a whole different, you know, game, like, that's, you know, Villanova had, like, Rory Sparrow, who right. went to the NBA, and he kind of gave me the, like, you know, this is going to be really hard, Greg, and that was the realization, and then, I think you remember, Richie Gaynor had a, they had a, a showcase right. at St. Peter's, at Saint Peter's, at Saint Peter's College. College. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to that, and I played okay, and I got a few, like, you know, just people would call you and write you, just form letters. And then uh, the, the, the moment I knew I was going to be a coach was I went for my first, I was a marketing major, and I, I was in education, was my minor. So I took a lot of education courses. So I knew I was probably, I loved teaching. You know, and I thought, you know, maybe coaching and teaching, but I wanted to be like an executive at Nike and an advertising executive because I'm an idea guy. I, I, I could do that. And I went on my first interview in New York City, and I realized when I got there, I thought it was an interview for just me. And I, I next thing you know, there was 30 people sitting in there, and the guy pulled out a pot and a pan and started, started, started telling us how I was going to be able to make a million dollars selling pots and pans. Oh, you're kidding me. And I walked out. I go, I ain't doing this. <laughs> this, is, this is where I got to start. I'm not, I, I can't. Pots I, I never and used a, I, My mother could attest, I never, I never used a pot or a pan in my life, and I wasn't going to be able to sell them. Yeah. And, and, and the, assistant, the assistant coach at Merrimack, Don Doucette, his first choice as an assistant, his daughter, uh, Megan, got sick, and he had to leave, and he called me and asked me if I would be interested and that's when I really said, you know what, that might not be bad. I think I can, you know, as, as a player, I was kind of a coach. I was always directing and telling people what to do. And sure enough, I got my first um, assistant position at the University of Lowell back then. That's, that's right away. Actually happened. And it happened right away. You got to. So I was a full. I was his top assistant, and I was. Full-time, full, we full-time? A, well, no, it was a part-time position. Oh, my God, God. So I, I worked at a, I was like a, a busboy at a restaurant and a bar up in Massachusetts, but then I got a full-time job. I was a life science and, and gym teacher at an alternative school in Wakefield, Mass., a suburb of Boston. So oh I did God. everything and anything to, to, to be able to coach, okay. you know, and that's. You know, I paid my dues, and I was at Lowell for two years and recruited my brother Bill right. and Gavin Cummings. Those are my first two recruits, and those guys wound up winning the national championship. And, and By I then, you were already at Holy Cross? Then I went from Lowell to Merrimack. Okay. And I was at Merrimack, so I was two years at, at uh, Lowell, four years at Merrimack. Oh, wow, four years at Merrimack, okay. Four years, so I was six years, I was at the division two assistant, and I'll never forget, I went to a game. And you worked and Brian, with Bert Hamill at Merrimack, right? Bert the late, the yeah. great Bert, Bert, Bert Hamill, Hamill at Merrimack yep. was the absolute greatest. And I'm, I'm at a game, and Brian Blaney is playing in the game. And guess who's at the game? It's George Blaney, his father. Right. And I just went up. I went, I'll never forget it, Hey, I was scared to death because George was a legend, yeah. like at Holy Cross and at St. Peter's Prep. And I just went up and introduced myself to him. And the next thing you know, we started talking. And he had a spot that opened it that summer I interviewed for. Didn't get it. And he says, Greg, don't worry. I'm, I can't hire you now. I'm going to hire a former player, um, Bill Rayner from Boston, Massachusetts. He says, but I'm going to hire you one day. And I thought, okay, this guy is just telling me the same old breeze. The next, thing, the next year, another assistant leaves, and he calls me and offers me the job. Uh, and and then that's that how full I, time? And that was my no. You know what? Merrimack was full. Merrimack was full time. So right. all wasn't. Full-time. So you were, you left was. the Merrimack full time job to go to Holy Cross to be a part time coach, correct? No, no, no. It was no. It was full time. Oh, it was full time too. Okay. And that was that was the big one. I went from making. I was in the teens, and then I'll never forget. I made the low thirties. Hey, you ready for this? Yep. Plus a car. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. was like, this is it. Yeah, I have now you're big time. The, now you're big time. I am huge. I'm a Division One assistant. I'm making $33,000, and I got a car, and I'm working for a legend. We beat Boston College and yeah. Providence. 
We went to the NCAA tournament, and then George went to Seton Hall. And he and, brought you with him. And, and, and he brought me with him, and um, I, I owe my in my career to a lot. You know, like Don Doucette helped me start it. Bert taught me how to just be a be a, a, a an incredible worker and coach. And then George Blaney taught me how to be a, a man, really, because he was just such a, um, you know, again, the Jesuit background and, yep. and, and, and just being a Jersey City guy. He just, I grew up with George and... Because George, George was from St. Paul's of Greenville, like Bob Hurley, who was just in an absolute yeah. great parish and a great area to grow up. And, um, yes. And, it, and oh, it, it also produced some pretty good sports writers, too. So it was a great, Absolutely. great, great, great area. I told, Absolutely, hey. Yeah. How about, I, t- I told this story, which was which is still in- yeah. just incredible. In 2010, I think, yep. okay, 2010, the national champion in college basketball was UConn with George Blaney as an assistant coach. Okay. Yep. The national champion in high school that year was St. Anthony with Bob Hurley as a coach. Right. Hurley wow. grew up on Linden Avenue. Blaney grew up on Bethalde Avenue, a span of five blocks apart. That, um, and they were both from that 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 area. That Jersey neighborhood. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah, man. That that speaks volumes, okay. man. That's that's it. All right, and then when you were at Seton Hall, I mean, because we're going to roll through your career pretty well, yeah. right? You, it's a you long were at one. Seton Hall. You got to recruit. Um, Shaheen Holloway, who was yeah. who you still have a very close relationship with. You tried sure. very hard to get Tim Thomas, and unfortunately, at the last minute, he signed with Villanova. But I know you were close. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was it like to be to go from coaching at Holy Cross to going and coaching in the Big East? Yeah, you know what? That's a great question. I, I, it was just like two different worlds, but the same. Uh, you know, when you were at Holy Cross, we were recruiting. And not to put Shaheen or Timmy or anybody in the Big East down academically, but when you're at Holy Cross, you're recruiting the highest echelon of of academic. Plus, correct, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. You were a Patriot League team at that time. You couldn't give scholarships. Right. right. So it was real. We were dealing with like high end academic kids. I was going to prep schools and I was going to. Really affluent areas, and, but not and being able to, get, to offer a scholarship must have been brutal. It was, yeah, it was hard, really yeah. hard, and that's really why George went to Seton Hall because Holy Cross had really kind of de-emphasized, you know, athletics and the basketball program at that time. Yep. And then, then the next thing you know, I'm in, the, I'm in it, man. I, I had to go back to my roots, and it was, you know, Elizabeth, and it was Patterson, and and Ajmal Bassett. It was was at uh, St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's and Jersey. So I was back in my element, and I was seeing people that I haven't seen in a long time, and I just felt very uh, much at home. And, and and but the recruiting really, what I said before, and it's very much the same. Is it's relationships with people, you know. And I developed a great relationship with with Shaheen and with with Timmy as well. And you know, you don't get them all, but even the relationships I had at Holy Cross with some. I don't know if you remember Chris Young, who pitched yep. for. Oh, yeah. San Diego Pirates. I, I was in Pitch his home. Pitch for the Mets. Pitch for the Mets. I was uh, in his home in Dallas, in, in the Highland Park, yep. where he was a great high school player. And I developed a really close relationship with him. So it's all about relationships and recruiting, as you well know. And you have to be at the right school and the right fit. Right. But if you don't, if you can't get along with people and with, with players and, and students, you, know, you, you won't last long in this job. So I, the transition was great. And it wasn't as hard as you thought. It was just you have to be yourself and you have to work hard at it and, and, and really dive into the, the people's lives. And, and, and Shaheen's life was a lot different than Timmy's. That was a lot different than, uh, you know, uh, Remontis Caucanus, who came from Lithuania yeah. and then went, went to a, a high school in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. And uh, you just have to, uh, you know, use your... And you did know, you recruit Ty Shine, too? No, no, I did not. He was after that you? Was, okay. That was, I think that might have been Freddie Hill at, with, and Tommy Amaker yeah. uh, recruited Ty okay. Shine. But, uh, All right, so anyway, yeah. you're at Seton Hall for a couple of years, and then what was yep. it, three years? Three years, yeah. yeah. 
All right, and then all of a sudden, George loses his job there at Seton Hall, and then, you, you know, obviously you lost your job too as well, and then you yep. were fortunate to hook up as an assistant coach with uh, one of your former high school teammates, I mean, one of your former college teammates, um, and you ended up going to East Carolina. And um, but yeah, you, before that, hey, I was at Yale. I oh, that's at right. Yale you were at Yale before East Carolina. I'll never forget telling my uh, down on Adams Street in, in Hoboken. I told my grandmother Victoria Horrenda, which is one of the great, great names of all time yep. for, for a college coach. If, you, if your grandmother's name is Victoria, <laughs> and I said, I said, Graham, I'm going to be an assistant coach at Yale university and she was always so proud of me and tell she would tell everybody at roy rogers we would go to the cemetery in north arlington and we used to go to this roy rogers and every time i would go down she would tell the person what i was doing so this is great gregory horrenda is the assistant coach uh at merrimack college and i'm like graham they don't care where i'm the, you know what i mean but she cared so i told her that I was an assistant at Yale, and she started crying because she thought I was going to Yale. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, you're going to Yale? You're going to Yale? You're going to be?" I said, "No, no, no, no! I'm going to coach ba- basketball at Yale, Graham." <laughs> However, and, uh, no, those were, that was tremendous. It was yeah. tremendous. Uh, you know, experience to be at Yale. Yeah. However, you just said your grandmother called you Gregory, but you're not Gregory. You're technically, no, that's technically right. Greg. No. Yeah, you are totally Greg, Greg on your birth certificate. See? That's right. I used to make you're, fun of him all the time. I would, I would say Gregory all the time, and your mother would, God bless I her. I know, she, she didn't like that. Him. Yeah, she didn't like that. He's, right. Greg, he's Greg John. Greg John. Yeah, so. Anyway, all right, so. So you were Yale, Yale to East Carolina with Billy Harry, and that was amazing because they, as soon as they got down there, they changed from the CAA, and they went to Conference USA. Right. Conference USA was just amazing back then. Hey, you ready for this? Calipari was at Memphis. Yep. Huggins was at Cincinnati. Right. Patino was at Louisville. Tommy Crean was at Marquette. Yep. And well, Kevin uh, O'Neill was at Marquette. I don't think Crean was there yet. No, no, no. Maybe he was. No. Hey, come on, man. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Come on. This is my. This is my life. Hey. All right, I know what happened. Well, it's my. <laughs> it's my. It's my alma mater. Kevin too. O'Neill. I know. No. No. Tom Crean was there because we beat him with Dwayne Wade. You beat we, East Carolina. Beat Marquette and you with Dwayne Wade. At East Carolina. Boy, that I want story to hear that. Amongst, you got to see the video. It was. A, it was absolutely. Yeah, it was an incredible, incredible we, game. We went to the final four, so you know. I know, yeah. no, I know. Yeah, but anyway, so well, you can look that up. I'll look it up as soon as we're done. All right, yep. uh, so, all right. So East Carolina, and then from there, and here then, it is. What? Where'd yep. you go? Well, here's the deal. Yeah, now, go ahead, this tell money me. gets really it gets dicey. Bad. Yeah. Now Billy Herrian, the head coach of of East Carolina, goes to Arkansas. And is an assistant at Arkansas for like two or three months and gets the New Hampshire job. He goes to New Hampshire, calls me up and says, Greg, I'm out of a job now. Trace, two and a half years old. He says, Greg, I'm going to New Hampshire. And I kind of told him to go to New Hampshire. But he gets the job and he's like, Greg, I'm going to fly you up. I want you to come and so, so forth and so on. He flies me up to Durham, New Hampshire, which is beautiful. It's on the water, and my wife is like, oh, my God, this is, like, perfect. And I said, Billy, I'm not taking the job. I, I, I want to be my own head coach. This is a great job for you, but I, I'm not going to be an assistant anymore. I did it. I did it for 22 years, and my wife was ready to kill me because it was a good, <laughs> it was a good salary. It was a good, Everything was great. But I just knew that this was not for me. I didn't want to go. You know, New Hampshire back then wasn't winning a lot of games. And me and Billy were together. It was tough at East Carolina. It was good for us to part as friends. And uh, and I wasn't a happy, it wasn't a great, great day telling my wife that. But I wanted to be a head coach, Hague. And I knew if I was an assistant there, I would just stay on that whole train and just be the assistant, the assistant, the assistant, wow. and I wouldn't make my own mark. And uh, like what a gamble I, that was! I sat out a year and did did television with John John Sterling, right? Which is that, did, that in itself we could talk about for an hour. But go ahead. That was an hour. Me. That's another hour show. Yeah. And sure enough, um, the following year I'm in Chicago, and I have to give my wife credit for this. I was. Working at a YMCA. 
Well, wait a minute. Now, Jill, Jill is originally from Illinois. Right? This, is, this is her hood. This yeah. is where she's from. Right. She's from the hometown of Ronald Reagan. Okay, let's what? let's put it like that. Was it Rock? So, oh my God! Hey, you are very close, Dixon, Illinois. Oh, Dixon, Illinois. Oh my God! All right, go ahead. So I'm. I should say I'm driving by the Y, and she's like, "Greg, why don't you do clinics at the Y?" Because that's what I've always done. I do clinics at the Y. Hey, you can't make this up. And where were you I, living at that time? Explain. I was. We were living in. Lake in the Hills. It sounds beautiful, and it is. Lake in the Hills, Illinois. I go to this Y. Your, your, you son, is, make... your son is three years old at he's this time. He's three years old, and he's in my car. We're right. driving around, and I'm doing clinics. And one day, I, this uh, Bob Klein is the director of the Y. And I said, Bob, I'm going to be a motivational speaker. I'm going to be the next Nick Vitale. I want to do motivational speeches. He says, Greg, I can have 100 people here for you next week. We're having a meeting with all of the uh, workers at the Y for, for camps. So they're all going to be here, and I'll give you a half an hour with them. True story. Okay. I said, Bob, absolutely. He doesn't pay me a nickel. He goes, I can't pay you, but I'm going to give you the opportunity just to do it so we can do it. So sure enough, I do it. And I do it well. I get everybody excited. When it's over, it's like I do really well. And I get a phone call from the director of the YMCA from Chicago. Says, Greg, I want to meet with you. We're starting a capital campaign here in McHenry County, Y. And I want to talk to you about doing that. I go meet with the man and he offers me the job. And he says the, the, the price of how much he's going to pay me. And I was floored. It was more than I would have made at the University of New Hampshire. Is that true? So, this is a true story. So now I, I had take no that. Idea. I had no idea about that either. See, I'm so learning I so take, much I about take, you today. Think, go ahead. I take, I take that job, and it was one of the most, it was one of the greatest things. They, they sent me uh, to Naperville, Illinois, to train for it. I trained for the job, and I'm doing the job, and it's just incredible. As I'm doing that, I drive one day into a high, to, it's, I'm in a snowstorm. I pull over going to a high school watch a high school practice. The high school coach that's in there comes over, the assistant, his name is Reed Nosbish, comes over to me, he says, sir, what are you doing here? Because I had like a hat on, and like, I looked like a, the Unabomber. And he goes, no, I said, I used, I, used, I used to be a college coach, and he goes, and, and I'm, out, I'm not coaching anymore, I'm at the Y, and he's like, you, if we ever want to use the Y, we can bring guys down, so I'm doing that whole pitch. And sure enough, he says, you know what, there's a junior college coach job right down the road, that you might be interested in. It's going to open up at the end of the year, and that's Elgin Community College where I first got my job. So if I didn't pull into that high school wow. on a snowy day in, outside of Chicago and meet that coach, Reed Nosbish, who's now the head coach of that junior college, he, I hired him as my assistant, wow. I never would have started. So I go from Elgin to Cabrini, Cabrini to UMass Lowell, UMass Lowell. Well, talk about UMass Lowell first. First, we're jumping around. Um, at I one point when you were working at Cabrini, you had well, to live with Jill's parents for a while, didn't you? Well, no, that was at Elgin. Oh, that was it Elgin. Was okay. Illinois, because they were back there. I was living, we were living in, the, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Hey, I tell people when I write my book or, or when I really make it big that, and I guess I made it big. I'm on your. I'm on your podcast. Yeah, that's right? the, you know that's the the shining your shining that's moment it. of your career right now is happening right now. All right, continue. So I, I said <laughs> I said I'm going to tell everyone this story, and it's the truth that I lived in the bottom, in the basement of my in laws in Chicago while I didn't have a job. And the truth be known, Jill Jill always my wife Jill always raises her eyebrows when I tell the story because. That might have been the nicest place that we've ever lived since I've been married to <laughs> to her. They lived in a gorgeous house now. Yeah, exactly. So it's just no, I have, a, I have a decent place. But that house was just beautiful. It was on a country club golf course and Oh really? So it sounds oh, okay. it sounds it sounds like it was like, you know, like I was depra you know it was nicer than uh, people may think. But at the end of the day, man, I just you know all right, so, what, I, I, I so know, when you, just, you left Elgin, you were very successful at Elgin, right? You won yeah. um, you won your league championship one year, right? 
Yeah, now we almost went to the regional finals where they never even went to play for that championship. We and lost. Juco basketball it, in the Midwest is brutal. I mean, right? Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. no, the dudes, man. Yeah. So you have to, like, you know, yeah. So it was, like you but were it was playing, a great. You were playing against men, right? I mean, yes. you had some. Oh, some yeah. Player. Chicago, oh. Juco is just like dudes. Oh, man. You know, yeah. and junior college out there is different. Like, a lot, like in New Jersey and New York, there's some Division two Juco, but there's mo- most. But in the Midwest, junior college is number one. They're good academic places, but they're also havens for guys that just don't qualify, and they wind up going from uh, junior college to Kansas, you know, to Kansas State and right. to Illinois to to high majors. So it was uh, no, it was competitive, it was huge, good ba- good basketball. Right. But uh, so then, what made you make the decision to leave yeah. Elgin and leave Illinois, and yeah. then come to take the head coaching job? At Cabrini College, or is New Haven Money. in the middle of it? Money. Money, okay. Yeah, so no, so it was just literally, I was, it was like a part time money at Elgin, and then I was doing the fundraising, okay. and I was doing John Sterling. I was doing games. Oh, you were still for doing the, games uh, for the. Yeah, yeah so I was just Network. juggling. And hey, what I tell you, so there are a lot of people out there that are going through tough times. When I lost my job, and then I didn't take that New Hampshire job, and I, I really went out. On my own, that was the most invigorating, exciting, probably biggest growth I ever made in my life because it was on me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I and, and the doors that opened up were just incredible. Okay. And and it, it, I went from being an assistant to being on TV, doing a national or a, a, a no, those guys annual are campaign. Those guys are no, but I'm, I'm talking about the, the campaign was the, oh. the, the, so the whole, the whole thing was just, and, and it gave me the opportunity to, you know, t- to grow yep. and become a head coach and run a program. And, and then I went from Cabrini to Lowell. All right. But where in between you took a big gamble and you were named as the head coach of the university of New Haven. And then it's, that, I, I think oh, no, that was two way weeks back. Into it. What's that? That was before. Uh, East Carolina University. Oh, it was. Wow, it's that long ago. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then yeah. So it's just. I, just hey, we don't have enough. You? We don't have. We'll have a cure for the for the coronavirus by the time this this interview is over. I hope. Exactly. I hope too. But keep going. So what? <laughs> what so what happened in New Haven? What, what was it about it that you didn't want? Well, to what happen? what happened at New Haven was I didn't never wanted to take the job, and I was. At, I was coaching professional basketball. We skipped that. My boss was Oscar Robertson. And, and I coached professional basketball in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati stuff. I have no the, idea. I forgot all about that. How about that? And, and the league was going under. And as the league was going under. What was the name of the league? I, I, it was the it was the internet IBL. George Blaney was the vice president of the International Basketball League. So wow. I coached Tremaine Folks. Wow. And Alan Edwards, who played for uh, Kentucky, and right. Wayne Edwards, and that, that 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 league was just a tremendous league. That league was getting ready to fold, and like basically over the phone, I accepted the New Haven job. But it was never just it was never uh, a, a good fit. Let's put it that way. Okay. And then Bill Herrian called me, and that's when I went to East Carolina. So it's really way too much information yeah, that all right. people want to hear. Yeah, but, but Greg, then your, I career, went to, your career is all over the place. And, and, I know. And, and, and you at age, say, I don't know, 42 or so, yeah. with, a, yep. with a young son and a wife, decide, okay, I want to be a head coach. I don't want to do this and take that job. Was a right. gigantic gamble on your part, right? And, uh, right, and and for a while there, it didn't seem like that gamble was going to work, right? I never doubted it for one second. Wow, that's and I can honestly amazing. say that okay. I never doubted it because that's the only way you do it, hey. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. it's just you just are solely, and I'm sure during that period there were a lot of nights when I went to sleep. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. And, you know, you, you question yourself, but I literally didn't because I knew it was going to happen because I, if I didn't pay my dues for 22 years and if I didn't go to prep and if I didn't go to five-star and if I didn't have all the great teachers, yeah, I would have nothing to fall back on. But I was prepared. Okay. And then now, when I went to, we went to Lowell and then we want to like, you know, like in 
five years, won almost 100 games and right, almost first, be Providence. Before you get to Lowell, let's talk about yeah. the first day you're going for your interview at Cabrini and what right. happened there. Nuts. I can't find the interview. I can't find the building. I'm driving my mother's car that still has the smell of her perfume. She passed away literally a week before. A week. And, One week. And a, a bowling ball is in the is trunk. It's in, in the trunk. And I can't find it. And I'm asking students where uh, I'm supposed to go. And in order to get to the interview, I had to go through Grace Hall, yeah. my mother's name. And I sat there at the car and I just started crying. And right. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't even get out of the car. Yeah, your I walk your, in. Literally, your mom, your mom was gone only five days. She was, she five was gu days. guiding me to this place yeah. in 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 the, in the suburbs, a oh, gorgeous cool. campus of, of Philadelphia. Yeah. I get into the interview and I try to say my first word, and I break down. And all the people in there, because there, it was used to be an all women's college, yeah. and most of the people interviewing me are women, and everyone knew the deal. And it was so once I got the first cry out of there. They just, you know, it was a perfect fit, and uh, but that they offered that me was a job that Leslie was a Danny. really turning point of your career because you did well at Cabrini. You went from yeah. Cabrini to Lowell, where you once yeah. coached before. You right. turned that program around, and you and you you were there for what eight years? I was there for five years. Five years, okay, and and then. Um, you then I interviewed you at FDU once. Don't get it. Yeah. They, oh, gave really? Vitron, they gave it to Greg They gave it to Greg Vitron, Vitron. and then you also went to, you also went to view and became a finalist at NGIT. That was that, right. I don't know if I was a finalist, but I interviewed there. I I interviewed at a lot of places, and because I was just you know I I didn't. But my you resume. You were a finalist at NGIT. I'm. I well, I might have been a finalist, but I didn't yeah. get the job. So no. when I don't get a job, I don't care who. Well, they hired Jimmy Ingalls, who was better looking than you. So that was yeah, that, that a was great the, guy. That was and I a love, great, great guy. I and love the, Jimmy. He's at Columbia now, yep. and, 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 and the he's building. A great coach. I I kid with him that the building that they play in now, which was which is absolutely amazing, the NGIT yes. facility. It may be may be the best on-campus facility in, in in definitely in New Jersey, right? Um, okay. Well, no, Mammoth. Mammoth would probably it's, be that. Well, close, the NGIT close. is built on the same. Uh, oh, it's gorgeous! Yeah, yeah. Gorgeous! Right? Gorgeous! I call that building the house that Engels built because if yeah. it was if it no, wasn't for Jimmy Engels, that building does not happen. There's no way. No, no. They beat Michigan. I love Jimmy. Yep. Love Jimmy. He's a great, great man. But anyway, so then okay. you, you, you... Are we almost done? Uh, uh, hey, are we almost done? Yeah, we're, well, because you're getting close to FDU. So now you... Okay. Uh, yeah, you, so you get... Uh, you, you're successful at Lowell. But at yeah. Lowell, you were in D1. And I don't think you could see that it was going to become D1. Or did you? Did you know? Well, I kind of knew it was... They were trying. We had a president that was very uh, uh, aggressive. And I knew it was coming down the pike at some point that my athletic director let me in. So we were, you know, I was getting division one players. So yeah, we, and, and then we, we beat New Hampshire in a scrimmage. Okay. We lost to one point in Eddie Cooley's first game at, at, at the Dunkin' Fairfield. Donuts center. Uh, no, no, oh, at, at Providence. Providence. Okay. At Providence. Um, we destroyed Dartmouth in a scrimmage. So we had division one players. And, um, so we were, equipped to, to make that transition when they did but then the same year that they went division one is when fairly dickinson offered me the job down here right and then what was that like for you when you talked to the fdu people at that time and yep. now after you know a journey that took 20 i don't know maybe th maybe full 30 years you finally yep. came home and what was that what was that like when they offered you the job uh, it was. It was. I didn't know if I was going to take it, and I actually turned it down once because I had a great job at Lowell. Right. So it was kind of like I built this thing, and I'm going to take it to Division One. And but but the, the the key that made me really hesitate was that we would have to wait. You know that four year period while you you wouldn't be able to go to the NCAA tournament. I I didn't yeah. want to wait. My my clock was not ticking, but. I was getting older, and I'm like, you know, I, I want to do this. And plus, just coming home and 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 turning around a program, the 
was a lot of pressure to do that, not on me, but on the agency, because if I came home and failed, you know, you fail, you know, in front of your family and friends, and that, there's pressure that's involved in that, but finally, I just said, you know what, man, I've worked my rear end off for this opportunity, and I'm going to come home, and I'm going to do it, okay. and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, and I wanted to win championships, that's what I told David Langford, that's, okay. You know that's it, and and, and what did, lo and some, behold, what did that's some what of your fr- what did what did some of your close friends tell you about the FDU job? I'm not going to mention Oh my anything. God, you you included told me not, <laughs> don't take it, do not take it, everyone, and that's that's why I took it because you know me, I'm like I'm going to do things that people don't think I can do, and that's and literally you're right, everyone was, and especially. And God love him, and I love him to death. Tom Kachalski, oh, one yeah. of the nicest young, nice, not young anymore, no, but one of the nicest, nice man. nicest men, um, said Greg, because he was close with Greg Vitroni, he goes, you can't win there. It's yeah. a bad job. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. And I respect Tom so much. But at the end of the day, I'm like, well, you know what? You can't do much worse. The, the program was just for a lot of reasons, and no, no blame to Greg Vitrone or Tom Green. It's just programs go up and down, and, and this was a down point. And sure enough, um, um, I, I took it, and it was yeah, a, it was a, a leap. Team, it was a, it was a leap won, of faith. What? They won three, four, no, and three. Yeah. The, the the three years prior to you taking the right job. three, four, and, and we three. had and we had you know not a lot of good players returning and. Uh, and it was really, it was just, then I, I, I went to Hudson, I went to New Jersey and hired Bruce Hamburger. Smart move. And Dwayne Lee. Yeah. And uh, I went back to my roots. And then that's really literally what we did. And we recruited, you know, Marcus Towns, who was a Jersey kid. And mm-hmm. um, and now, you know, with, with Caleb Bishop and uh, Nadi Basiri and... Um, you know, Mike Holloway from South Jersey. Yep. We, we just, we, we just, we've recruited from the inside out, and uh, you know, great things have happened for those young men and for for our program and for the university. Okay, and then what was it like to first? We, I guess you've you've now gone to the NCAA tournament twice in the last right. three years. Yep. Um, um, what was what, first of all? What was it like to be able to take that program to the NCAA the first time? The first time was just co- almost like I don't even remember it. It was like a, it was just like a, a a a dream that happened really quick. We were the third youngest team in America, and um, you know we we had a great ending to the year, and we wound up um, you know being picked ninth, uh, but we we were the number two seed in the tournament, so we really overachieved, and then we beat Wagner. That that was the night. Hey, that was really the greatest. Jim Calhoun was doing TV then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and Gary Cohen did the radio, and Kerry Kittles, who we befriended, came to the game, and my family was all there in Staten Island. And yep. to win that game that night kind of validated everything that you know we just spoke about for an hour. All the hard ships and the, the difficulties in life that and all the people that have helped me and the, to win that game at Wagner to go to the tournament was just you know the night I'll never forget um, but the second one was the one that was you know really showed what our program was about and, you won. We, we, and we won we won a game we beat uh, Prairie Very View good. in Dayton and then we had a chance to get on a plane and my uncle Billy his probably last shiny moment was coming with me and our family and Bridget, my godchild, and my brother Bill, and uh, I'm never forget. I'm coming home from St. Francis after we won that championship. Dave Vigiano and Petey Dorito were on the bus uh, with us, with the team, and it was just like the, wait, I don't boy, think the bus is getting a lot of airtime here today. I know it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad. really it's sad. Really I'm sad. trying to get some more free golf out of Florida. My ratings uh, are going down was, as we yeah. speak right now. But uh, anyway, go continue. But that so. Was, it the was second just, time yeah, is a validation. The second think, time what? we go to yeah, we go to Dayton and we win, and then we're next thing you know we're going to you know Gonzaga and playing the number one seed, and it was really uh, you know a difficult because Gonzaga lost in the championship to St. Mary's the week before. Yeah. We just had we we got on the plane at like 
two in the morning to get to Salt Lake the day before. And they so had we had nine days rest before yeah, playing. Yeah, they said they were ready and they were great. Yeah. And but then that game was just you know it was just uh, you know it was uh, for for our guys it was just a reward to play in that atmosphere in that tournament to play a number one seed. I'll never forget Mark Few was very gracious and he was great before and after the game. And then the, one of the final plays when Nadi Basiri scored the basket and, and, and me and I, me and Nadi hugged. It was really emotional and mm -hmm. got a lot of play all over the country on Scott Van Pelt. And, uh, but it was just the fruition of a lot of hard work and it, it justified. It was the first ever NCAA win in, in the school's history. And, and then the next thing you know, I'm doing the commencement speech, um, at the university, so Which so much. I've been, and to talk also uh, too, you became an absolute media darling uh, because of it. You said well, you know. were on, you were yep. on with Francesa. You become yep. a very good friend of Joe Benigno, and you've done his yep. show at least three or four times. Um, yeah. Uh, Rome, you were on Rome with Jim Rome awesome. as well, yep. you know. So you you Bruce, become a, Bruce Beck, Bruce Beck. You know, so, so it's just part of the, you know, that's part of you know, it's become part of a, a product of the NCAA, you know, extravaganza. Yeah. And I'm, I'm good at, you know, like when we were kids, we would just, me and my brother Bill would just pretend like we were Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson yeah. and, and, you know, and Marv Albert. You know, we, hey, we all grew up just dreaming the same dreams. And yeah. then I, to a lesser extent, I, you know, kind of got to those dreams that I dreamed about. Not many people in life do. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just forever very thankful and, and humble that I've had some great players at FDU and at all those all those universities that I've been at and uh, it's just it just made my life really special and I just, it shows if you work hard at something and you love it and you dedicate yourself to it just like yourself and a lot of listeners out there mm -hmm. you know great things will come and in my, in my profession you just get a lot of you know notoriety when things go well but when things don't go well and obviously they yeah, we've had some tough stretches here with me and my family. We've just kind of um, got back on the horse and fought, and uh, it's 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 where the, our country is right now. Our country's in a in a in a situation where um, Maybe you know it's really, it's really tough and it's Maybe really scary. Bad. But you have to be true to your religion and to your to your family and to your friends and, and to yourself, and okay. and we'll get through, we'll get through it for sure. All right, before we before we we close this all up. You're also um, you're, you're also uh, been a oh gosh. Don't worry about the phone, hey. You're busy. I know, you're I know, busy. I'm busy. I just I just I didn't, should have had it dis disconnected before I talked. Um, okay. Uh, what was I going to say? I um, you, the other thing that is very very important to you and you take a yep. lot of pride in is that you do a weekly radio show. Uh, on WFDU Radio. And oh, it's on, yeah. Uh, it's on, what, Saturday mornings at 8 a.m.? Now it's Sunday mornings at 7.30. We got a great slot. <laughs> we yeah. have a great slot. All right, I'll but listen no, to it right but, before I go to church. And but, um, and yeah. just say, talk a little bit about some of the guests that you've had uh, since you've done yeah. the radio show. Now it's been, uh, what, four years that you've done the radio show? It's it's now, you know what? It's my sixth year. It's wow, unbelievable. Time flies. Yeah. But let's go just Jersey City. I've had you know Coach Hurley has been on on the show, uh, or, or let's say New Jersey. Bill Raftery is on the show, um, um, but but nationally the the exposure well, that we've well, got. Well, you also had me on the show on a special thank oh, you. Yes. The Thanksgiving right. show, see that, that was You're important. Right. Right. No, no, you've been on. The, how many times have you been on the show? Just we, once. Gonna a, just the one. We're gonna bring you back. We're okay. gonna bring you back. Um, but but you know you go like the NFL. We've had Boomer Science and Science and Bill Cowler. Um, you know baseball Frank Thomas. Um, we've had Dick Vitale, Jay Wright, uh, John Beeline. Right. Um, you know in the media, Chris Broussard. Rick Pitino, mm -hmm. Mike, uh, um, which he's going to call you pretty soon to, had, to schedule had, a game. Pitino's going to call you pretty soon to call you. He's, he's I got, know it's, he's, unbe he's, it's he's, unbelievable. He's, he's back in New York. He's going to want that. In, he's going to want that. Uh, that take. So. Everybody wants to play, but yeah. uh, you know what? Hey, I, I've just been. 
I've been blessed. But how much fun I'm is that? Good. How much fun is that to do that that show oh, with your, I love with it. your I love uh, it. team of listeners? My team of listeners. No, it's 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 Sean Morrison who really helped me get to Fairly Dickinson. Uh, oh, now the show David really Langford the crap. Want, wanted to make me the 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 voice in the face. Believe it or not, after you, and they wanted me to do the show. And my first guest, a NBA coach, right now. Who's my first guest? Let's see if you if you know. Your first guest that you ever my had on your show? Ever on my show is a, a current NBA head coach. Oh, Steve Clifford. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I figured it out. I'm like, wait a minute. I know a lot of kind of half famous people. You right. know, John B. Line I've had on, and uh, just you know, Jay Wright's been on twice. Yep. I've had Dave Wanstad is tied now. Dave Wanstad has been on five times. Wow. And Ke- Kerry Kittles has been on five times. Mm-hmm. Kerry Kittles so I have is a great have man. Great man. Kerry's Kerry the Kittles, best. Great man. Great we man. had him on. They're all archived. Your fans could listen to it. We had him on talking about Kobe because he played against Kobe. When Kobe was a high school kid, he would come to Villanova that's, that's and play. That's right. And incredibly, he, he, his, tie, his tie will always be directly to Kobe because Calipari wanted to take Kobe. That's right. And the owners of the Nets said, that's we right. want a four-year player from college. So they took Kerry Kittles. And that's, that's right. And I know that for a fact. And everybody says, no, that's not the truth. I went, whoa. That's the truth. I was, I, Calipari told me directly that if he had his druthers, he was going to take Kobe. There's no question. It's the truth. Yep. Hey, I've got, I've got to do this. I've got to end the interview. All right, let's end I it. Haven't, I haven't had any food. And, with, and you didn't even talk about the San Antonio blood clot situation. But if right. I don't eat food by a certain point, it's not good for me. So, All can, right, so let's can, go we, can we wrap it up with one more question? One, one. Uh, can you sum up how incredible yep. your career is by including the the support that you've received from Jillian? My wife. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do anything without my wife. <laughs> to this day, uh, yeah. I mean, she's just been. I mean, and, and this is a, a woman that comes from, you know, Illinois, who's not a Jersey girl, but in, in her heart of hearts is a is the most caring, supportive, most beautiful person I've ever met. And I waited until I found that person. And her mother is even better, Hank. Wow. She's like, so I, I've just been blessed with a great in-laws. My, my, everyone jokes about uh, my my father in law, who I love to death, and he's so different than my mother in law. But I've got a family behind me that is, you know, obviously the Bergen family from Hoboken sure. uh, is huge. But my my wife and my family and my son, uh, they mean the world to me, and, and and they put up with my craziness and they and your, understand and your it. Wife, and they get it. Your wife makes you look young because she looks like uh, she's about thirty four, and you look like you're sixty. Getting young looking and it's yeah. sad it's tough it's i really always is. introduce her she gets she doesn't like this but i always when i introduce her to people i said no this is not my daughter this is my <laughs> wife to clarify everything uh, but uh I'm, but, I'm a lucky guy Hagen, and so are you and how blessed how blessed are you now uh you just received an extension on your contract which you're going to be yep. around at fdu for a while and yep. um you, you, you got to be a really happy guy that right now with you know although it was a, t- a little bit uh, of a tough year but you'll bounce back. It's a cyclical uh, league, and um, yes. and how blessed are you to be able to be here uh, well, in your home area and coaching a Division One program? It's it's incredible. I have a tremendous our boss Chris Capuano, who's very close with the president of NJIT, and my athletic director Brad Herbert. And they're just tremendous visionaries. They're great people. They have faith in me. I have faith in them. So, I, and I've got tremendous players that are just tremendous kids and it's uh it's 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 awesome i love the nec it's a great league and every year we have a chance to go to the tournament next year we'll be fighting for that opportunity again and i i'm just i'm just very very lucky but i think i learned it a long time ago is luck is a a product of diligence and i've been diligent in my craft and my profession and and uh, I think you get what you deserve, and uh, I'm going to keep on fighting for that, Hey, Beautiful. Greg, thanks so very much for c- c- coming on. This was uh, oh my like, God. We, you know, this is a great, great uh, trip down memory lane. 
And we'll have, to, awesome. we'll have to do it again. We'll talk just a little strictly about your relationship with Joey Coco Diaz. That'll that'll take up an hour and a half as it is. I would love to do it. You're All the right. best, Hank. I love you. All right, love you too, Greg. Thanks so much for doing it. All right, buddy. It. All right, you take got care. Bye bye. And that was my guest uh, this week. It was uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University head coach Greg Herenda, uh, my longtime friend from high school, uh, and he's doing very very well at FDU, taking that team to the NCAA twice in the last three years. Uh, that was um, I'd like to thank my special. Um, my special executive producer, Johnny Haig, for helping me to put this all together. And we'll be back with another edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast next week. I'm your host, Jim Haig. Thanks so very much for listening. It's really doing well. And keep listening and keep uh, clicking on on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.